Hello, I'm going to give a quick example of time series forecasting using exponential smoothing, which is another smoothing technique that seeks to get rid of the irregular components of uh, a time series. A time series is a variable whose values change over time. So now the first step here is to select a smoothing parameter, which is a constant ranging between 0 and 1. And the second step is to then forecast the series. To do so, the forecast value at time period t is equal to the smoothing constant multiplied by the actual value of the time series one period ago. And then to this we add 1 minus the smoothing constant and then we multiply that by the forecast value one period ago. So for example, if we wish to determine the forecast value in time for time period 2, it's going to be equal to the smoothing constant. Let's say that this smoothing constant is 0.2. So it's going to be 0.2 multiplied by the actual value of the time series one period ago. And then plus, this is going to be 0.8, 1 minus 0.2 that is, multiplied by the forecast value uh, one period ago. So let's show a quick example using data um, for weekly uh, one-month crude oil futures prices um, as published by the Energy Information Administration. And this is a clip from the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and go to the spreadsheet and check it out. So here we go. Here is the time series right there. All right, so the first thing we, we want to do is to de decide on the smoothing constant, and we've decided on 0.6. All right, and then we go ahead and uh, carry out the forecast. So um, since um, there is no other uh, way to go forward, um, typically the first forecast value is going to be equal to the actual value for that period. All right, that's the practice. So now let's calculate the forecast value for time period 2. So I show you a reminder here, all right? That's your cheat sheet. It says that the forecast value, I hit equal, open parenthesis, is going to be equal to the smoothing parameter 0.6 multiplied by the actual value one period ago. So that's going to be for time period 1. Click on that, close parenthesis, open, uh, sorry, to that we add open parenthesis probably a couple of times 1 minus 0.6 you don't want to type 0.8 all right uh, the practice in spreadsheet analysis is to make sure that you either utilize functions or you um, uh, write out your equations and your for your formula rather so anyhow uh, multiplied by if you look over here the um, forecast value one period ago so we click on this, and then we close parenthesis, all right, making sure it matches real good. All right, and we click OK, and we click Enter. So now we copy down, but before we do so, hit F2 to edit the cell, and then overclick the cell containing the smoothing parameter, and then click the function key F4 to make it constant. Do the same over here, F4 to make it constant. Enter, and then copy down real quick all right and as you can see going down here our out of sample forecast is twenty nine dollars and seventy nine cents because that that's in the week we're in the week ahead all right the data we have as you can see begins from january seventh two thousand all the way down to if you see here Fe february nineteen twenty sixteen so this February 26, 2016, we actually don't have the value. And so that's going to be in the outer sample period. And so using the smoothing technique, we're able to determine the um, forecast value to be 29.79. So we're pretty much done. All right. Let's go ahead and do some diagnostics all right, by calculating the mean square error and the mean absolute deviation. These are measures of goodness of fit. The lower these values are, the better uh, our forecast. Basically, our forecast accuracy increases as these, um, uh, these estimates drop. So to calculate mean square error, which is actually equal 
to the sum of the squared error divided by n. Basically, it's the average of the sum of the squared deviations about the uh, actual value, as I show here. We're going to come here, hit equal, open parenthesis. y would be the actual value minus y hat. All right. So actually, um, I have calculated it for this first period, but it's not necessary because we know the first period is going to be zero anyhow, since the forecast value is the same thing as the actual value. So it is the practice to begin this calculation from the second period. So here it's going to be equal, open parenthesis, this value y minus y hat. All right, that's more like it. And then we simply copy down. All right, like so. All right. If I go all the way down, I can take this out. All right, that's a gibberish. All right, so going back up here. So to find the square deviations, I go over here, equal, click on this residual, hat, and then the number two. All right, that's it. And then um, having squared it, as you can see up there, I copy down. Right, so let's go ahead and format that so it looks good. All right, um, you can also reduce the number of decimal places so it looks even better if you want to, like so. All right, so let's check it out at the bottom. Take out this last observation because if I hit F2, you see it's referring to an empty cell. So let's take it out. All right then. So with this, we can calculate the mean square error, which is simply the average of the sum of the squared residuals. All right. Close parenthesis. And that's the value, 9.15. And for the mean absolute deviation, what we need to do is to take the absolute value, ABS is the function of the residuals right there. All right close parenthesis and then you copy down All right and again let's make sure that we don't have any gibberish at the bottom that's it and then the mean absolute deviation is going to be the average of these values right here so come here equal average highlight all of, the, all of these close parenthesis enter and that's it right here so these are absolute measures of deviation, and the lower they are, the better the uh, the the uh, better the forecast accuracy. And so the smoothing constants can be selected by alternating between values that'll achieve um, as little as possible uh, mean square error and mean absolute deviation. For example, if I choose a value such as um, 0.8 you see that this is even less, it's even lower. If you go back and choose, let's say, 0.35, all right, that's a little higher than it should be, all right. I'm not sure why this guy doesn't want to look good <laughs> right there. So you know the drill, all right. So that's all there is to it, and I copied it out here. And uh, f what I did here was to actually go and check out the actual price on this February 26th to find that it actually is um, it actually is uh, thirty two dollars and twenty seven cents and uh, let's be careful the forecast value that we got using um, 0.6 is twenty nine dollars and seventy nine cents what you see here was obtained using a different smoothing uh, constant all right and I can change that out to update the value right there. So this is 29.79. And that's it.